If you are starting out your journey of learning the M language in Power Query, the very first thing that I will recommend you to learn is working with lists in Power Query. What lists allow you to do is create more dynamic queries that will not break in case anything changes with your data. In this video, I'd like to talk about two very interesting examples of working with lists and how could they possibly create more dynamic queries. This video is all about working out the magic of lists in Power Query. You and I, let's go take a look at some magic. All right, people, the first thing that I would like to talk about are the bare fundamentals of what exactly is a list. A list is nothing but a single one columnar data. It could possibly contain numbers, it could contain some values, it could contain multiple number of rows, but the columns are just going to be one. Now, what defines or what separates a table from a list? List is always one columnar, probably a table could also be a one columnar table, but that does not make the table into a list. What makes the list as a separate object is the curly braces in which the list needs to be defined always. So whenever you have the opportunity while you're taking a look at the M code in the formula bar, please do take a look at the curly braces in which the lists are going to be defined. So lists are always going to have these curly braces at the start and at the end within that a list is going to be defined. In this video, I'll talk about opportunities to identify uh, where all probably do you get a list. We'll also take a look at how do we extract a list, manipulate that list and maybe make it more dynamic and plug that back into the query so that the query starts to become more dynamic. All right, let's just go with some data and start playing with lists. Okay, as the first example here, I'm working with some random data. Take a look, some stupid data here. We have name, uh, column one, column two, column three, and a couple of junk other columns that we have. Now, the condition that I'm trying to build here is that I would like to be able to capture the name column and all the other columns that contain the word column within that. So there are three columns, like column one, column two, column three, along with the name column is what I'd like to keep and remove the, all the other columns that I have. Sure enough, you can do that with the user interface as well. So what you can do is select the four columns at the start, right click, and you can say something like remove other columns. But what that does is that actually hard codes the column names within the formula bar. So you can see that column one, column two, and column three, they have been hard coded. Now if tomorrow column four gets added, this is not going to be captured within my query and the query obviously breaks. Now what do I do about that? If you also carefully take a look at the query that we have been able to make using the user interface at the moment is that we have been able to uh, make a list. So take a look that all of the names of the columns, they are within the curly braces and this is nothing but a list, like a one columnar data. This is the first row of data, the second row of data, the third row of data and the fourth row of the data. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna be able to extract all the names of the columns, manipulate that and plug that right here so that the column names become dynamic. Tomorrow, if column four gets added, that gets updated in my query automatically. Let's just start with the first step of extracting the column headers in the form of a list. That's our first step. So what I'm trying to do here is that I'm trying to go ahead in this table and in this table, I'm trying to get all the names of the columns, right? So what do I do? I create a new step and I say that from the source table, which is nothing but the entire table, I would only want to pull up the column headers. So I'm going to use the function called table.columnNames. And as soon as I do that, and I close the bracket and press enter, this is going to give me a list of all the names of the columns of the table. Note that we have been able to get what? We have been able to get a list. Now what happens in Power Query is that when you're working with the list, the list has very limited features of the UI. You can't really apply filters, you can't really do a lot of things with the list unless that list is converted back into a table. If you go ahead and take a look at all of these options right here, all of them have been grayed out. All of these options have been grayed out because lists have very limited UI features in Power Query. Now, to be able to work with this list using the user interface, I need to convert it back into a table. Don't worry, we'll convert it back into a list later. So I'm just gonna right click on that list and I'm gonna say that I would want to convert it back into a table because I would want to do some operations on top of you. So I'm gonna say that uh, the delimiter is nothing. In the, if there are any extra columns, please uh, truncate that and click on okay and this converts back into a table. Now what condition do I want to write here? I would like to pick up the name column. I would like to pick up all the columns that start with the word column. Sure enough, I can apply a filter. I'm going to go here and say that text filters and I'm just going to say uh, contains and I'm going to say, hey, um, it should be equal to name. That's my first condition. Or it could probably begin with something like a column. 
right? Those are the two conditions that I'd like to go with. Click on OK and I am left with uh, all the names which are valid as of now that I would like to keep. Problem is that this is as of now a table. And you can see that here, the output of this is a table and this the output is a table as of now, but I would like to have a list and the icon is going to change to a list right here. Now, how do I convert it back into a list? Because if you remember what we saw in the table.remove columns functions, we were required to input the data in the form of a list. And unless we do that, it's not going to work. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say drill down. This is going to convert this data back into a list. All right, pretty good. Now I'm going to create a new step and in the new step, I'm not going to refer to column one, but I'm going to refer to the entire table, which is nothing but the source table, which contained all the other columns. So I'm going to go to go to this and I'm going to call out the source. Once again, I get the source and this time I'm going to again do that manual work. So select the name column, the column one, column two and column three, right click and I'll say uh, remove other columns. Where are you? Remove other columns and that is good to go. Now, the problem is that the name column one, column two, column three are again hard coded, but nothing to worry to be able to automate this part. We have been able to create a list and you can see that this is our list that we just created, which is nothing but column one. Let's just give it a better name. So I'm just going to call this as column list, not column lost, but column list and press enter. Now this list is going to go to this particular step. So I'm going to get rid of all of this and call out my column list. Now, this is good enough. Um, the formula was asking you for a list. You have provided a list. This should just work. Still gives you the same output, but there are no hard codings in the formula. That means tomorrow, if another column gets added, your query will not break. Let's just graduate from working with simple lists to slightly more tricky examples of working with lists to make your query dynamic. Take a look at this data. We have been working with this data, but this data has got two errors, two error columns. So while we were importing the data from Excel, we had a couple of NA errors that cropped up and I won't want these errors to be gone. So what do I do? I go ahead and pick up these two columns, column two and column three. I go over to the transform tab and I say that I would want to replace the errors with a null value. So I say null and we say, okay. And the errors are sure enough, they are gone. Now, the problem is that again, the names of the columns have been hard coded in the formula and I do not really want that. What if another column, maybe column one or column four then starts to show up the error? This formula is not going to handle that very well. So if you now take a look at the formula, I'm going to see that I still have a list structure, but slightly different list structure. Let's just evaluate that. So if you take a look at this, it says the column two is going to be replaced by null and the first pair is going to be packed into one list curly braces at the start and curly braces in the end. Then it has another list, which is uh, the other column, which is column number three name of the column. And you'd like to replace that with a null again into a curly braces. Now we have two pairs as of now. So column name and the replacement value column name and the replacement value. These two pairs have been again packed into a form of a list. So we have a, like a nested structure. So we have like a list, a list here. And within that list, we have two sub lists. There is going to be a list right here and there is going to be a list right here as well. Sorry for the bad handwriting. That's what it's going to have. So we need to have a, like a nested structure that we need to supply it to the formula in order for the formula to work a list. And within that, again, a list. How do we create such a structure? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back a couple of steps and take a look at the work that I have done and try to build this nested structure. Remember list of a list is what we're trying to get. I'm going to start to evaluate my query and take a look at the previous steps. So if I just go back to the source right here, this was all good. Then I took out the column names as headers right here and I got all the column names to which I then converted into a table so that I can work with that. I applied filters and now I'm left with only the columns that I would like to work with. Now, all of these possible columns that I'm trying to work with could probably have errors and I'd like to remove the errors from all of them. So what do I do? I want the name column and I would want to write the null value right here to be able to get you know, replaced by the nulls. And similarly, I'd like to write null, null, null everywhere else. So I just go ahead and I create a column and I say that uh, in that particular column, I'm going to write a value called null and I say, okay, and that's the null. So this is the name of the column and this is the null value that it gets replaced with. Now, pretty good. The problem, however, is that a list could probably contain just one column, not two columns. As of now, this is a table and the table contains two columns, the name of the column and the replacer value, the name of the column and the replacer value. What I need to do is I need to convert this entire thing into a single list. That means 
this thing becomes one list this thing becomes another list this thing becomes another list this thing becomes another list so on and so forth how do we do that let's just take a look so i just go over to the next step and the first column from here gets converted into a list we are using this list sometime later in our query so i'm not going to disrupt this step i'm going to create a new step right here click on okay and i'm going to refer back to the added custom step which is where we have pairs of two the name of the column and the replacer value so i'm just going to say that this is equals to added custom and press enter and we get with that now the first thing that i need to do is these cannot be rows of the data they have to be the columns of the data so i will transpose the table so i'm just going to come right here and i'm going to say something like table dot transpose now you can use the user interface as well, but I like writing the M code, just keeps me in practice. So I'm just gonna say, okay, for now. And this transposes the table. Now, as of now, you can see that uh, a list is going to have just one column of the data. So this becomes like one list, this becomes like second list, this becomes like a third list, and this becomes like a fourth list. So all the four columns need to be converted into individual lists. How do we do that? There happens to be a function which converts all the columns that you have of the table into their own individual list. So what do we do? We have a function called table dot two columns and I can just wrap this around this and close the bracket and press enter. And now all the four columns that I saw have been converted into a list. So name column, which is the name of the column gets replaced with the replacer value null. And the second column also gets replaced with the value null, so on and so forth. Now. The structure that we were trying to chase was a list of a list structure. Have you been able to get that? Sure enough. So take a look. This is an outside list. Again, one column. This is an inside list, which is contains the two pieces of information that we are seeking. Name of the column, replacer value. Pretty good. Let's just call this as re replacer or rename column, something like that. Rename columns and press enter. Now I'm going to go back to my step right here, which obviously is giving me an error. Let's just go fix the error. So in custom two, uh, this is good. Um, here, this should not really refer back to the names of the columns because this is a list of a list. It should rather refer back to the column list that we originally created. So I'm just going to correct this. So column list, this is good to go. The bracket was missing and this is good to go and replace errors is working. Now, as of now, the problem is that the names of the columns have been manually inputted right here. It is a list of a list structure and I'm just gonna get rid of all of this and replace that with rename column step that I have created. All right, pretty good, press enter, nothing changes, all is good, but in case any errors crop up here or crop up here or in the new columns, this is going to just stay all good. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one. I wanted to make this video to drive three key learnings that are going to be essential. Number one is that you should definitely take a look at opportunities where you can find a list in the formula. Anything that has curly braces or double curly braces that denotes a list of lists, those are the places that you can probably carve out of the formula and plug in your custom lists. Now to be able to plug in the custom list, the second thing that you need to understand, which is very important, is that how do you extract something in a form of list? This could be names of the columns, this could be a record, or anything else that you would want to be able to extract in the form of a list. And the third, which is a very, very important one is that if the formula is asking you for a list, don't try to input the table over there. The formula obviously is not going to work. So feed the list if the formula is asking you for a list. Let me know if you found this one helpful and in case you have any questions around this, I'll be glad to help. In the end, a big shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you are a beginner and you'd like to master the fundamentals of Power BI, which is DAX, data modeling and cleaning and shaping up of your data in Power Query, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses to get on top of simple and more complicated problems and you shall benefit a lot. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye.